Hello and welcome to your 60th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about executing scalar functions. This tutorial is going to be an info only tutorial. There will not be a hands on exercise in this tutorial and this is kind of still in line with the preceding last few tutorials 57, 58, and 59. So, okay, anyways, uh, scalar functions can be called using two methods within a select statement, as you saw in my last tutorial. I had an example of that, number 59. And also by using the execute keyword. Regardless of the method you use to select the output, if the parameter values are consistent, the results from either execution will be the same. Okay, calling scalar functions in line. Let's take a look at that. So as I just stated, a scalar function can be included in a select statement. The parameters can be a column, constant, or expression. And there we go. Here's a little example right here. Okay. Now, this is the typical use of a scalar function. This method is straightforward and only presents a challenge when multiple types of parameters are specified as parameters. If you have a single input parameter and any other combination of other types of parameters, you must make sure that the order in which they are passed corresponds to the order which they're specified in the function. So, and then in this example I have below, we have two parameters. We have a default parameter and an optional parameter. Okay, now continuing along. The following example, right here, down here, the first select statement calls the function with a single parameter. It succeeds since the second parameter is an optional input parameter. Assigning the null value to the second parameter tells SQL Server that it's optional. The second select statement has two parameters. Since both values are provided, it succeeds. The only challenge now is to make sure that you are passing the values in the correct order. All right? Now, as a general rule of thumb, you should always supply a value regardless of the type. This is the best practice. The following example right below uses the function created at the beginning of this section. All right. In the first line of code, the function accepts an input and optional parameter. You'll notice that the actual date is provided for the first parameter because it means it's an input parameter. Since the second parameter is optional, a null is specified. You see it right there. This tells SQL Server not to specify a value. Okay, on the next line, the first parameter is a default parameter and the second is an input. Because default, the keyword default, is specified as the first value, SQL Server will use the value assigned to that parameter and the date value will be assigned to the input parameter. Okay, now let's look at calling scalar functions using the execute keyword the other way. All right. A scalar function can also be called using the execute keyword which I'm going to be discussing in more detail in a later tutorial where I go into stored procedures. For now you should know that you can use this keyword to execute scalar functions. To obtain the output of a scalar function using execute keyword you must declare a variable that will hold the output. In this little snippet, code snippet right here, the at age variable is declared. Then, using the execute keyword, the function is called, assigning the return value to the variable. Finally, a select statement is issued to get the results. Another thing to take note of is that the parameter name is not required. However, if you specify multiple parameters of different types, as a rule of thumb, you should explicitly specify the name. And this makes sure that the correct value is assigned to the appropriate parameter. Okay, for example, assume that a function has been created that requires two date parameters. If the parameter values are specified in the wrong order, the results could be incorrect, but the function would still successfully execute, potentially returning misleading data, which can get you in trouble. Specifying the parameter names helps to mitigate that problem. And to complicate things further, assume that you have a function that has an input parameter, a parameter that is optional, and a parameter that has a default value. 
At a minimum, you must include the parameter name of the input parameter. If you want to override or specify a value for the other two types, you must also include the parameter name. Regardless of the types of parameters and the method of execution, the key is to specify a value for each parameter and ensure that the order of the values corresponds to the order of the parameters. Alright, so thank you for checking out this tutorial. In my next tutorial, we're going to start going into understanding table value functions. So again, that will be understanding table value functions. And that will be tutorial 61. I'll see you there.